Today, we are taking advantage of inclement weather to bring out the best images of Zion National Park. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good thing that I stayed at a hotel tonight. Otherwise, I would be packing my tent nice and wet. So the weather set in and Zion, at least in its upper elevations, was supposed to get some snow. I can see the clouds slightly breaking up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pack up my uh, gear, get some breakfast and drive up to these switchbacks that you can actually get to because again for Zion you have to take a bus to get into the actual va valley we're not going to take time to do that um we're going to see oh i can see a little sunlight hitting some of the hills out there anyhow we're going to see if we can uh, see any of that snowfall and what kind of imagery we can capture from the pull offs in that part of the park so we're at the entrance to the park right now and what I did is I took advantage of this, these clouds that are hanging low over the tops of these mountains. Again, going for that minimalistic look, I first did two panos across it, and then I focused on that peak up there and that peak back there so I can provide those images that graphic artists can utilize. Just a little advice for my brothers and sisters in the U.S. military, uh, you can get a military park pass for free with a valid military ID. So I'm about to go through here. I think I heard on the radio it's like a $35 entry fee. Not for me. In this environment, you're going to have a dynamic range issue. You see, your eye can differentiate between lightness and darkness far more than a camera sensor can. So what happens is when you aim at the landscape, one of these mountains, and you half press your shutter button, it's going to meter the exposure off of the landscape, and the sky is going to be very white, very blown out. If you meter off the sky, then the landscape becomes very dark. So I'm metering off the landscape because I do want, in this situation, the sky to be blown out so it's, a, it's more wider. It's more of a minimalistic image that graphic artists can use. I'm also shooting in raw format so I can cover as much detail as possible. You can see that I'm taking a lot of images from the spot. What I'm trying to do is take a handheld panorama to really bring out the details. I'll put a link to my handheld panoramic method at the end of this video. So we're starting our climb up the switchbacks. Uh, that will take us up and out of the park. So I'm going to be pulling over at every opportunity I can just to see what type of imagery we can capture. To go into Zion Valley, you need to take a bus. To go on some of the more well-known hikes, you need a permit. I do not have time for either of those, so I'm driving east on Utah State Route 9 through the park. You do need to pay the park entrance fee to drive this road, but it does offer some spectacular views for the traveler with limited time. Well, we're about halfway up. I'm gonna turn around because the pull-offs, most of the pull-offs are in the downward direction. Something I'm really liking about this uh, EOS R camera is my ability to touch the screen and have it focus for me. So I don't have to finagle with um, uh, taking the camera, moving it to where I have the autofocus set, half pressing the button, moving the camera back to composition, switching to manual so it doesn't change, and then hitting the shutter button. All I have to do is touch which part of the screen I want in focus, and we're done. Now, one of the challenges I have here is trying to create a sense of depth, and that's where I'm going to have a foreground element, a middle element, and a background element. Um, so I'm trying to look at this, the other cliff side over here to see if I can use that kind of as a foreground element to, again, provide depth inside of the image. 
There's no doubt that I love the gray and landscape image, but you also need to have several points of focus. On the left, I'm using the vegetation as a diagonal line to lead the viewer's eyes to the rock formation in the center bottom of the image. Further back on the right is another diagonal line leading the viewer back to the rock. As their eye travels upward, the majestic mountain surrounded in clouds dominates the rest of this image. One thing I love about vertical walls like this it, and clouds is that as the clouds break up we get this dramatic lighting on these different vertical walls and having clouds in front of them as well only helps. I continued to drive up along the side of this mountain, stopping wherever I could to try and make the most of my limited time here. Don't shy away from a cloudy day. Here in the American Southwest, we do not get many days like this. Inclement weather is the diamond in the rough, something to embrace, not to avoid. For example, this sky island image would not be possible without the thick cloud cover. Sure, it makes capturing images a bit more difficult. You need to protect your equipment from the weather, watch your histogram to prevent blown out pixels, and try not to slip in the mud all at the same time. It is these challenges that will allow you to capture the images that your friends will be envious of. Next week, we're gonna finish my five month trip by exploring the Northern Desert of Arizona and photographing the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. As always, please consider opening your hearts and your homes to a shelter animal need. And if you can't, please donate to your local animal shelter. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next week in Arizona.